Hi, Joel. How are you? Perfect. I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. I'm excited about the interview. I'm happy to chat. <laughs> yeah, thanks for, thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I have a whole bunch of questions, and <laughs> so some of okay. this might feel a little bit like a rapid fire round. Um, some of them might be light, so you might not need to think about them too much, but for others, if you need to pause to think about it, that's completely fine. Um, if you want to skip a question, feel free to let me know. Um, in general, if you can be as open and transparent as you're comfortable being, that would be awesome. Sounds good. All right. Um, so my first question is, what were you doing just before this call? Mm. <laughs> eating lunch very quickly in between meetings. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what is your daily routine like? Um, more regular recently. Usually I, I, I get up around six o'clock. If I, if I can manage, I go jogging for about half an hour from like 6.15 to 6.45. I come back and put my two younger kids through their piano practice and then send them off to school, usually around eight o'clock. And then I have breakfast, I catch up on email, I sort of do some prep work for the day. Um, and then usually the day starts around nine and usually from nine to five. Um, it's a um, pretty steady stream of meetings. Yeah. Wednesdays are kind of more relaxing. And then I have a couple of blocks on that are not totally filled either. So some, some weeks are busier than others. And then dinner with the family, um, sometimes I catch up, kind of help kids with homework, sometimes um, go for a walk, uh, read a book, and then usually a couple more hours in the evening of just emails and docs and like prepping for the next day, or if I need to edit papers, that's sometimes when it gets done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Weekends are very different. I tend not to work on weekends. Um, and actually like disconnect from like Friday five o'clock um, and and really spend a couple of days mm. quite disconnected. Yeah, yeah, that sounds nice. Um, what is your favorite part of your day? Um, the first cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, like when the house has gone back to quiet and then I have my my, you know, I, I'm a person of routine in the morning. I have like my grapefruit, my toast and my cup of tea and like just looking up at the emails and just sometimes reading a, a, a document or a paper to prepare, but just kind of the calm of the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what is the least favorite part of your day? Um, the least favorite part? Part of my day, I find like the, the morning routine with like six of us in the house is pretty hectic, I think. And, you know, everyone needs something and not enough time and enough mothers in the house for all the needs. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not always our best time together. Yeah. <laughs> Evenings are usually better. We sit down, have dinner, it's good. But the morning, it's a little rushed and often they leave and I'm like, wow, that should have gone better than it did. But Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There's another day the next day to try again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what one chore do you dislike the most and why? Which chore do I dislike the most? Um, there's not that many that I dislike. I think I just do them at a different speed when I don't like them that much. So I do it very fast and not usually very well, <laughs> which my partner doesn't really always appreciate. <laughs> um, uh, like I think like all the dusting and that kind of stuff is not something I pay a lot of attention to. I do it really quickly. It's kind of the good enough job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you struggle with procrastination? I don't. I really don't. Um, I, which is like, yeah, there's a lot of times I don't work, but it's very much, I think, a choice that I, I there are many things I value more that I make space for. 
Um, but yeah, procrastination, not a lot. No, I, and maybe that's just my rationalization of it, but if I not, you know, if I have something that maybe I should be doing, but I choose to do something, then I choose to be so doing something and I have no regrets about making that choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you struggle with time management? Uh, not a lot. Again, I think like, like there's of course not, never enough hours in the day, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's, it's, I don't see it. I guess I don't see it as a struggle with time management. I see it that I always have to be very, very vigilant about what I commit to doing versus the time I have and mm -hmm. be very um, like sort of ruthlessly prioritize. That's mm -hmm. really, I think, <clears throat> something that's perhaps is the closest I have to a superpower. Um, but just like in this time, in this moment, what's the things that I need to be doing and, and do that mm, very yeah. diligently. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you set an alarm in the morning? Yes. Yeah. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And do you, do you hit the snooze button ever or how often? No. Yeah. No, <laughs> not a snoozer. <laughs> Once in a while, like my alarm is usually on my phone and my son will come in and take my phone while I'm sleeping and then it doesn't go off and that, that <laughs> makes me unhappy. Yeah. 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 Um, if I asked your friends, what is Joel like? What do, you, what do you think would be three adjectives that they might use? Oh, God. Um... Three adjectives I would use. I um, I have a I have a lot of close friends who are not really in the same field of work as I am. Most of my close friends are not in, in AI. The people I see, and if weekly are so. I think in 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 their mind, there's there's um, there's certainly a sense that I'm very hardworking. Um, that would definitely be something they say to describe me. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think some people think, have this view that I'm very relaxed, um, <laughs> which I don't know if that's true, but I've often been told that, that I'm just so relaxed about things and people kind of, I don't know if relax is the right way, but like people kind of get upset about stuff mm -hmm. and for me, it's just like, oh, whatever. We'll figure yeah. it out yeah. from that point of view. So I don't know what's the right adjective for that, but definitely I think those two things um, they would say, I think also they would say that I'm pretty willing to do stuff. Like someone will throw an idea and I'm like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And how much of this is true? Is anything exaggerated? Is anything missing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's reasonably true. Mm. Yeah. And maybe that's why those are the ones that come to mind because maybe they've said, you know, they would think or said other things and it, it doesn't really resonate with me. But yeah, I think those things are pretty true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Are you happy with the number of close friends you have? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, mm. I, I keep a lot of, I mean, I'm not tons of friends, but I have good friends from many stages of my life that I, that I stay close with, that I, I spend time with, I always have, mm. um, and that, I, that are very important to me. And so, mm. yes, I definitely spend time on my friendships, but it, for me, it's, it's very important in the balance and and honestly, it's very important also for me to have friends outside of our field. I find our field is just kind of frenetic and very much of a pub bubble. Hmm. And <clears throat> it's really useful for me. I have friends who are, you know, all sorts of different types of work, uh, artists, teachers, uh, pharmacists, all sorts of other things that puts them hmm. in contact with other life experiences. Hmm. Um, and I really value that in, hmm. our, in our friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is one thing you're worse at than people around you? Worse at than people around me. Um, I, hmm. um, 
I don't know if that's a good one, but I think I, I find a lot of people are very decisive. And I don't know if they just give the appearance of being decisive or they really are decisive. But mm. for me, I often come in a situation and I, I want to understand the different sides and the pros and cons. And, and out of that, something, you know, it's not decisions never get made, but like the, I'm, I'm pretty content sitting in indecision for a little while. Like sometimes if I don't feel it, mm. I won't force it. <clears throat> so where I, and sometimes I admire other people who, who can kind of zoom in right away hmm. to a decision, or at least I wonder if I should do that more hmm. <clears throat> um, than, yeah, than, than other people around me. Yeah, yeah. And what is your single biggest strength? Uh, I, I think it's the ability to prioritize. Hmm. I think that has, um, <clears throat> And, and having really clarity on, and, and, you know, with prioritization comes really clarity about the things that you value because mm -hmm. without that, you, can't, you don't know how to prioritize things. Um, but yeah, having a lot of clarity about that, that of, about what's in, what I value and then using that very actively to prioritize. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do, in my work, in my personal life, in my time management and in a lot of spheres of, mm -hmm. of my life. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the recurring moral conflict that you struggle with? What do you mean by model conflict? Moral conflict, like uh, oh, in terms moral of conflict. moral, yeah. Uh, moral conflict, ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> A moral conflict. Um... <laughs> yeah, I don't know if it's a moral conflict, but certainly I... I struggle a lot with how much space to give my children to kind of explore, make their own mistakes, figure it out versus like telling them what to do. And mm. there's a part of me that just wants to like really organize them and structure them. And because I feel like that's a good path for them. But at the same time, I feel like they also need space to, to learn and they need to be able to be who they want to be. And, and I struggle a lot with balancing between those two things. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there a specific instance where you distinctly recall feeling privileged? Uh, I feel privileged every day. Like, I mean, I, as far as I go back, I've had a distinct sense of that. Hmm. Um, at, at so many, it, it's a, it's very in, ingrained for me. I have no doubt that that has been a, a huge, um, huge advantage in my life. Um, starting back just to, you know, kind of the, the family support system that I've had, the fact that I, I can take risks because I have an incredible safety blanket, you know, <clears throat> I have parents that to this day I can kind of call up and they will show up at my doorstep in three hours and like take over whatever part of my life needs support. And I, I use it very rarely, but mm. when I need it, it's there. And, and there's been times in my life. And so it's very easy to, to take risks in a situation like that. And it goes beyond my parents. I have an extended family. I have friends and so on. Like <clears throat> Uh, a partner and you know uh, close people around me daily also who do that so it's it's very easy to yeah to to take risks in that kind of situation it's very easy to go on with with my life in, in that kind of a kind of that situation yeah yeah um what are you insecure about um what am I insecure about? Hmm. Uh, I'm, I, I, different things, but I think I, w one of the things that is a kind of a recurring theme is, is just, I, I guess that what I want to say is sort of written communication. And I, I, you know, I don't know if it's an insecurity, but it's certainly one that I spend a lot of time just trying to get right. Just mm. like when you write something down, it just seems permanent. And, and I, I don't necessarily mean like 
technical writing though that also like just struggle to get things to you know both how i want to say it but also be mindful of how it's going to be perceived and not compromise too much and that um that takes me a lot of uh, a lot of time and the other one and i'm i'm also insecure i don't know if it's an insecurity but like very you know so aware that i'm 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 leading an organization that you know is building ai and yet i don't have my hands in the code um and i haven't for a number of years now mm. and and i don't know if i call it a insecurity i feel it as a liability and it it, it does weigh on me that, you know, the, the, the disconnection between, you know, trying to support people who do a type of work when you're not on a regular basis in the practice of that work, that also certainly weighs on me. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like an imposter? Um, I... I don't know if I feel it that way. I, I, I think for me, I, I would articulate it differently. I often feel different in the room. I, I don't necessarily feel like an imposter, probably because I've been so privileged and sort of been, you know, told many times that like, I have my, you know, place around the table and I have my voice in the room is, and so on. But, but I do sometimes feel like a little bit the alien in the room. Just in terms of, of thinking differently, seeing things differently and so on. And, and really just always questioning, like, is this just me or is this a valid point of view? That feeling is a very familiar one. Um, but I think I don't necessarily, I, I guess I, I've, I've been very, very lucky to have many people to, su you know, support my point of view that I don't, I don't feel it as much as if I'm able to just say, like, I'm thinking of this really differently than other people. And, and because I can sort of also sit in the uncertainty that maybe they're right, maybe I'm right. Sometimes they must be right. Sometimes I must be right. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. But the feeling might be similar, yeah. the, that of an imposter. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Um, what is something you're trying out these days and how is that going? What am I trying out these days? Um, <laughs> I know what I should be trying out. <laughs> I'm having trouble getting into it. Just from a more professional point of view and in my current role, um, one of the challenges is to communicate more with, with the teams that I support in the organization. And that, that, that is important, especially in this time when we're working from home or not in the office with people. Um, and so it's definitely a weighing on my mind, but when, when I try, I just, ugh, I can't get it right and I'm not really happy with it. Mm. So I keep on trying, but, um, but I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't find my voice. I don't find exactly what I want to say. It's been, it's still a work in progress. Mm. <laughs> and that's also why I, I really, I, I think I really admire the, some of the writing that you've been doing and the blog post that you've been doing, because I feel you find kind of every voice that is very authentic, but also that like, you know, his, it's authentic to you. It's an interesting point of view. It's balanced. And I just, <laughs> I'm looking for good models of that and I'm struggling to find my own way. Yeah, yeah. Um. What is one of your favorite tools or tricks or hacks that you use that makes your life more fun or more efficient or more convenient? Mm. A trick that I use. Um, um, I don't know. I'm, a, I'm big on sending myself emails. Um, just like... <laughs> Reminders, things to do, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I can't go to sleep, usually like sending myself an email is a good way to, to it, get it out of my head. It's sitting in the inbox. So it's as good as a to-do list. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I send it, I send, I'll send the same, same email to three of my email addresses. Um, <laughs> if it's really important and if it's not so important, I'll just send it to one. <laughs> I have some 
a McGill address, a Facebook address, and I have a personal address. And the really important stuff I send to all three. Um, Interesting. And otherwise, it's one or the other. Interesting. Why is that, though? Like, what is all three by um, you? <laughs> <laughs> like, more real estate on the screen. Because I see. It just get like so much volume of email on each of these boxes that it can slip by, but the chance that it slips by in all three boxes is less. So <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what do you tend to think about most when you're not intentionally trying to think about something? When I'm not thinking about anything. Um, that for me it'll be like the moment when I'm going out for a walk or a jog or something like that when I'm just kind of <clears throat> and sometimes I listen to podcasts but other times I'm just clearing my mind <clears throat> um I I spend a lot of time these days just thinking about um about work about uh fair about what is uh, you know how how to help a research organization like this be be productive how to support it through kind of a growth phase how to connect it to the company how to stay relevant on research all of that tends to be kind of bigger strategic questions that i i don't know how to resolve i haven't really been trained to think about and mm -hmm. so i Every day I show up and I don't really know how to do this and kind of a mix of instinct and learning and observing other people and hmm. that, that a lot of that work for me just kind of needs to to sit and, and brew whereas other types of work I'll do in a more focused way. Hmm. Um, but that's the work this these days that tends to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. What is something surprising about you? Something that the rest of us might not might not guess. Something surprising. Uh, oh, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll reveal one of my big secrets. Um, <laughs> for 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 twenty years, up to maybe very recently. Um, once or twice a week, I took ballet classes. Um, oh. sometimes middle of the day when, since I've been in Montreal, um, and I would just block it off in my calendar with like, just the name of my ballet instructor. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I started as an adult. I started when I was 20 and I'm honestly not very good at it at all. Um, but doing it for 20 years, you learn something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 20 years and, is a long time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's one thing that once I joined Facebook was harder to already oh, no. two jobs, like fitting half a day was oh, no. harder. So I didn't go as often, but I would still go every couple of months, just drop in on a Wednesday morning. And, uh, and those two hours were just wow. um, very, very intense moment of just, um, yeah, just kind of happiness just for me there's a lot of pleasure to doing something that you're not good at but you derive so much joy from um yeah. and for nobody else just kind of my own my own personal joy um, yeah. and unfortunately due to the pandemic my my teacher of almost 15 years has decided to retire oh wow. so when we go back i don't know if i'll ever go back to wow. doing ballet wow. but i went maybe um three weeks before it closed down. And so I don't know if I'll ever do it again. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you, um, I've never revealed this one in, a, in an interview before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what is one thing about the world that surprises you? The world at large? Yeah. Um, Uh, I, I mean, I think these days, these have been really difficult times and, and I'm, I guess I, I guess I'm an optimist at heart. And so I'm, I'm surprised by how many people are not willing to, you know, to sort of take actions towards the collective good when we have pretty clear signal that, you know, whether it's wearing masks or social distancing or some of, you know, decisions with respect to the environment, that mm -hmm. it's so hard for some people to make decisions that 
at least to me, seem like they're necessary for the collective good. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is the most recent unexpected thing that happened? Most recent unexpected thing. Um, I was contacted by some people who are putting together a play and they there's an AI angle to this play and they suddenly like send me this research paper about you know how I mean it's about the spread of misinformation on some networks and like a mathematical modeling of that and they like suddenly want to meet and talk about like my understanding of how AI is playing into this to inform their play and it's actually from a theater company who um, I really like and I've seen a couple of their plays they do sort of um, documentary theater so it's theater but based on a, a particular context and they've tackled yeah. some really interesting topics in the past um so it was kind of cool I'll probably yeah. I, I read the paper I'll probably meet with them and it'll be just a small part of their artistic work but just yeah. like these kinds of doors that life opens um mm -hmm. that through my you know the work that I do in AI suddenly once in a while I get these doors that open up into other worlds uh, are always things that I really treasure. Yeah, yeah, that sounds neat. Um, what is one way in which you wish your life was different? One way it was different, huh? I mean, I, I mean, at, a, at an individual level, I'm pretty content with my life, I have to say. <laughs> Maybe that comes with like really rigorous prioritization, but I, I don't do a lot of things I don't want to do. And mm -hmm. if I do, it doesn't last long. I redirect uh, very quickly. And so I, you know, there, there's a lot of things I wish was different sort of in the world. Um, but within the realm of the things that I feel that I have some agency over mm -hmm. um yeah i think i i make the choices that i do um and 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 i'm yeah i i think i i i'm comfortable with the choices that i make mm -hmm. yeah yeah um what is something you're looking forward to in the in the short term like tomorrow or next week mm, tomorrow very short term <laughs> Um, well, tomorrow morning I have to go run 10 kilometers, um, <laughs> at a pretty good clip because Facebook has this like race, uh, this 10 kilometer race and I've signed up in a team with mm -hmm. Kim and, um, Michaela and Fazel and I'm number four and all three of them have done their race and I haven't done mine yet. <laughs> Um, and they've put in some really good time, so I don't want to let my teammates down. So I'm a little bit of trepidation, and my daughter's coming with me. She's a very fast runner, so she's going to pull me and time me, and <laughs> it'll be fun. Yeah, she, yeah. She's the one who got me into running many years ago, and um, well, and now she's much faster than me, but, you know, she'll still run with me. Yeah. Um, it's always fun to go with yeah, her. Yeah, that sounds so, nice. I'll be tomorrow morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think you are average, above average, or below average happy relative to people around you? Oh, I definitely have a super high happiness threshold. I see. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, this one maybe you already kind of answered. Even my baseline is yeah. very high. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, when was the last time you danced? Last time I danced, um, I guess this morning to wake up my son. <laughs> 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 I made him dance to wake him up because he was kind of sitting there in a puddle with his doo-doo uh, and sort of <laughs> tried to engage him in dance to wake him up. And I, had to, I, I try when, uh, to just put some music on to wake them up. I wake myself up and then 15 minutes later, I start up some music for them. And I try to pick different music different day and kind of set a different um, tone to the day. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what is your most recent dream that you remember? 
Ah, I had some vivid ones recently. Hmm. Um, but now I forget them. Yeah, I usually remember them, but not for very long. Hmm. So I'll remember them and sometimes like think about it in the morning while I go jogging. Um, and I know this morning <clears throat> I thought about it, but I, I couldn't tell you. Hmm. It's gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, are you more, you kind of answered this, but are you more optimistic or more pessimistic than people around you? I think definitely optimistic. Yeah. yeah. I think it feeds in the happiness level. You got to be <laughs> optimistic to be happy because otherwise yeah. <laughs> it's a little hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think there is a point to life, to our existence? Um, I'm... I'm not, um, I, I think there's a point, but the point is very much in the moment. There, there's a point to, to, to leading a life that's consistent with your values, to leading a life that is, um, you know, making the world better for people around you. For me, that is the point beyond this. I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a strong, uh, strong, you know, <laughs> the, the closest thing I come to having a religion is probably science. Um, so um, I don't have a lot of opinions uh, uh, beyond that about like the true meaning of life. I don't also have a lot of, um, I don't give a lot of importance to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the long term or the, the legacy aspect, I don't, I don't worry much about it. And I feel like if, you know, generations go on and I get forgotten in the dust, that's okay too. They will have their time and their moment. And yeah, mm -hmm. so for me, the, the meaning is very much in, in the moment, in the present, grounded in the where, what, who of, of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you struggle with in life? Um, I, I mean, I, it, it's, it's funny, but, um, I, I think, I mean, str I struggle a lot being a good parent to me, that's like such a challenge. And I, I, I have a lot of challenges in my life, but that's the one that sort of confronts me with my own, <clears throat> yeah, with my own self doubt. Um, you know, like you just don't want to screw that up. There's a lot of things you can screw up. And in terms of like, you know, yes, ha you know, a lot of things that I screw up, I fall back on my safety blanket. Um, but, but yeah, you don't, you don't want to screw that up. So really thinking through how to best support and, you know, each child is different and might need different things and, and, and balance that also with my own, you know, some, and I'm not the, I'm not really the kind of mother that's completely devoted to, to their, you know, the well-being of their children. I'm also very devoted to my own well-being. Um, and so balancing that all together and, and, but still, you know, yeah, that's the thing that I struggle with yeah. on a practical basis. And that's where, you know, I have great friends who give me great advice who I, <laughs> yeah. who is yeah. really useful and and some of them are people that i've met since having children so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. um how do you decide what to work on um it's a mix of what am i really excited about and there's usually things that i'm excited about and i um i i kind of really i i love this feeling of like starting a new project and imagining what this project can be um, <clears throat> and kind of getting in place all the conditions to make it successful. About six months ago, we sort of pivoted to start a COVID project in collaboration with some of the local hospitals and universities and getting people involved. And so um, very much when I have these kinds of a project that I'm passionate about, I think that's that, that really energizes me. Mm -hmm. um, and, but it's a mix of that and also just like really rigorous, like what needs to be done today, right now, right? Like, and, and, and being, I, I feel a sense of responsibility for, for just the people that I work with. And so if I'm the person kind of delaying other people from 
you know, doing what they want to do and getting what they want to do. Um, that doesn't sit very well for me. I want to be someone who kind of enables other people to do their work better rather than slows them down. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that is, has a lot of um, importance for me. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Um, what are two, two common traits among some of the best collaborators or colleagues you've worked with? Um, usually, I mean, it's going to be easy ones, but usually uh, good communication, just, you know, being transparent, being able to, you know, stay where things are and, and really engage um, pretty transparently. Good collaboration, definitely. Um, and I think also like a certain generosity towards like our joint purpose, right? Like just this commitment that the the outcome of the project is more important than each of our personal outcomes. And <laughs> if the project is successful, it's going to be a success for, for everyone who's contributed. That kind of mindset mm -hmm. um, is is really, I think, good ingredients, probably the two two best ingredients for a good collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you have good ways of spotting these traits early and spotting them well? Um, it's a little hard at times. I, I tend to sort of kind of watch out early days and see how it goes. I tend to be, I think, very transparent in my expectations of people in the project. So pretty early on, I am, I'm, I, I, I'll state like, you know, here's what I'm willing or able to contribute to this project. What are you able to, does that, does the sum of this lead to something interesting? Mm -hmm. Having these discussions pretty early on. Um, I will say for a lot of my collaborations, um, especially the work that I do with, with healthcare and medicine, I also look for people who really are experts in their domain. Mm -hmm. Like people who really have clarity about the important problems, who have access to high quality data, who know how to write great papers and influence the field. and. And I, I think, you know, you just need to partner with these people for the work to have impact. You, there's mm -hmm. no point partnering with someone who's not an expert in their field, because I certainly am not an expert in their field. So yeah. um, for any of these projects, I also always look out for that and, and you know, partnering with people who I think are already having very significant um, scientific impact in their own field. It's kind of, for me, the best vehicle to, mm -hmm. to make progress. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Um, oceans or hills? What did you say? Oceans? Oceans? Oceans oh, or hills? Oceans yeah. are hills. Um, lakes. Lakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I like both oceans and hills, but if you give me a choice, it's going to be lakes. Lakes. Yeah. If I can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is something you love doing that you're terrible at? Um, a, a lot of things. Um, I mean, I think that the most uh, the most salient one is um, uh, ballet. But a lot of these kinds of yeah physical activities, I I do enjoy it a lot, and I'm not very good at it. But mm. ballet definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the joy to the joy to talent ratio is just like way <laughs> off. <laughs> Whereas in other fields, like so many times, right, like our joy correlates really well with our ability to do something well, right? And yeah. you kind of motivate yourself by saying like, being that something is a way to enjoy it. Um, <clears throat> but for that one, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what is something you did recently that even people who know you well were surprised by? Hmm. Something I did recently that people were surprised by. Hmm. I don't know if I did anything that surprising recently. Our, our life is a little bit constrained. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you felt like a kid in a candy store? A kid in a candy store. Um, I guess I, we, um, 
I, I, I took a weekend last weekend or the one before. Now I forget either the last weekend or the one before. I took a four day weekend away with two of my girlfriends, mm. just the three of us. And we went down to Prince Edward County, which is an area with a lot of wine tasting. And we took our bikes and we just went on a long bike ride to one of the beach on the local lake. And then we came back, stopped at a vineyard and there was like, the sun is shining. There's like a musician on stage We're outside in the yard, tasting a glass of wine and just wow. chatting. And the vines are there full of grapes. And it was just beautiful. The whole weekend was great. But that kind of moment of like yeah. the sun setting, the music, it was amazing. Wow. Yeah. That does sound amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what is something you didn't like at the time, but you're glad happened? Um, oh, hmm. <laughs> when I, uh, this goes way back, when I was a PhD student, as part of my qualifiers for the PhD, we had to do the speaking qualifier where you have to give a talk. Mm -hmm. Um, so I gave a talk and um, I failed my qualifier and I thought I was a decent speaker. I still think I was a decent speaker, but the committee decided I had not covered enough background material for my audience when I had given a tutorial with a background material the week before, but they didn't know this. Anyways. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was like really a shock to me I was like what I was uh, I think it was a shock to my pride of course it was a shock to my sense of perception who I thought I was a decent speaker yeah. um, and it really served to really motivate me and kind of just uh, regardless of what happened that day in that room really like it, it, you know the importance of giving good talks and spending time to do it and think carefully about how you want to do it and so on. Um, it just kind of really raised the importance of that. And I mm. since then have spent a lot of um, time to do that and worked hard on doing that and something that's still to this day um, that I spend a lot of energy on. And I think it pays off in many ways to communicate your ideas, to get people excited about your ideas. Um, it really it helps to give good talks. Um, mm. So yeah, but yeah. at the time I was, I was not happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you easily get nostalgic about? Uh, nostalgic about? Um, I think I get nostalgic about when my kids were little. Now they're old. They're like, you know, 11 to 17. But like that age when they're like, just about a year old um, yeah. or six months or something like that. <laughs> I really wish we could just go back and forth between time because at the time, I don't think I had the, um, the, the mind space um, to, to appreciate it nearly as much, but now it's like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what is something that made you smile today? Um, made me smile today. This conversation, I think, is uh, <laughs> bringing a lot of a lot of smiles. Yeah, yeah. probably the yeah. So far, <laughs> it's been a pretty quiet day, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I like talking to people in general. I like engaging in conversation. This is a little bit of a one-way conversation. Um, <laughs> but we had our conversation a few weeks ago where I asked all the questions and you had the <laughs> so Maybe this is fair. Um, but I like, I like talking with people. I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are some of the best advice you've gotten or given? Mm. Best advice I've gotten is... Um, <clears throat> is from my mother. Um, I was two or three months into my first, into my faculty position at McGill, my first and only faculty position. Um, two and three months in, I was just not coping well. Like I was just, I felt there was some, you know, you prepare as a grad student, but you're of course not ready at all for being a professor. I was just like teaching grants, all of this. It was just overwhelming and I was feeling very overwhelmed I don't easily get overwhelmed and she told me 
um, you're just gonna have to kind of figure out your own way of doing it and don't look to everyone around you and how they're doing it and because they're doing this doesn't mean you have to do it like just give yourself permission to do it your own way and um, her, her message was I'm sure it will be more than good enough my interpretation was well if it's not good enough that's fine I'll go find another job and and it wasn't worth doing it a way that didn't feel like the right way for me mm -hmm. and um, I might as well do it on my own terms and either it was going to be good enough or it wasn't going to be worth it Mm -hmm. And it was like, like that, like that moment, so crystallized the change of mindset. And from that day on, that has been like a mantra, just like, just do it your own way. And that's going to be either it's going to be good enough, mm -hmm. or you're going to go do something else. And that's okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I still use it to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, why do you agree to do this interview with me? Why? Um, I, I honestly enjoy chatting with you. I think you have an interesting and unique perspective on many things. Um, some of the things you've told me in the past really echoed how I saw certain things. Um, but at the same time, sometimes you'll say things that surprise me. So I was just curious to know more about this project of yours. Um, which I figured would be interesting. The best way to know about it was to, to I guess, play the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, I think those are all the questions I had. Is there anything that you think we should have covered about you, your life, um, that we didn't get to? I'm a very willing participant when someone else sets the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank I'm you, curious to know yeah. why, um, why you, can I ask questions? Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> go for it. <laughs> no, I'm curious to know why, um, why you decided to do this. What was your point of curiosity into this? Um, so I think it's a couple of different things. I think one is that similar to what you said, I think I really enjoy talking to people, um, connecting with people. But at the same time, I really dislike small talk. Um, and I'm really bad at it, so I don't like it, and I'm really bad at it, I'm very awkward with it, and uh, things of that sort. So I really enjoy conversations where we can talk about real things in life. Like, they don't have to be super serious, right? It can be even light things, but something that's real, but we're not just exchanging words for the sake of it, and time is going by, but I'm actually getting to know the other person. Um, so I think in a lot of social settings, over time, I've ended up having this trick that I use of just asking specific questions that are interesting, but general enough, and everyone likely has a different take on it, maybe even a different interpretation. And I found that they're often good seeds for conversations to then continue from them from there um, and being sort of very away from the small talk realm. So in general, I think I have given questions a lot of thought. Um, so that was that's one angle. And the other is, I think with AI researchers and everything that's, there's so much of like, oh, this researcher is awesome and this work is awesome and this paper is amazing. And I feel like we don't often get a chance to just even remember that there are people just like everybody else that are individual researchers behind this um, yeah. where they may not be something completely different it's not like it's a whole nother species of individuals that are doing this work and so I thought it would be interesting to have conversations about other aspects of life that's not specific to AI and where technology might go and all of that which we talk about a lot um, so I think the intersection of those two made me think that this might be a neat thing to do um, and so I reached out and people like you were generous enough to say yes and um, that's how this is happening yeah cool. and, and did you I don't know how far along you are in your interviews like did you what, what's most surprising about it um <laughs> I think a couple of things. One is there are some of these, so I'm asking everybody the same set of questions. Um, and so it's interesting how many of the questions have the same or very similar responses across at least the individuals I've spoken to. And then there are other questions where I hear the exact opposite um, in, in terms of what, what answers I can get. Um, and oh, so that's exactly. And so that's been interesting where um, it's already a very narrow set of people, right? Like these are AI researchers who I felt comfortable enough to reach out to. And so it's already sort of a very concentrated space of people, at least right now. 
Um, and along these same dimensions, you sometimes have very similar responses. And then along the same dimensions, you sometimes have very dis different responses. And so um, that's been quite interesting. Um, someone, someone suggested that I could make, uh, so right now, the way I'm thinking about this, that these would be videos on a per interview basis. So like one for you and one for the others, but someone suggested I could also make them on a per question basis where everybody's answer to one question is exactly. Um, and I thought that was interesting to, um, potentially see the patterns, uh, more. I'm not a hundred percent convinced. Like the idea here isn't to like compare and contrast answers or anything like that. Um, so I'll have to think about that more, but yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've talked to anyone who's done this kind of exercise in other, like in other domains or something. I don't know how they do it. Cause I can see, I can see the value of kind of tracking one, one narrative of one person, but also of pulling out per themes. Yeah. Um, what are some of the some of the different themes that come back? The, the the one I don't know if that's any I don't know if you've seen this the series um uh seven or seven up or up seven or something like that. Mm -hmm. I may it's, not have. It's this series that it's like a British series of these kids that were tracked like a cohort of maybe twenty or something kids. And they track them every seven years. So they film them at like age seven, 14, 21, 28, and so on. Wow. And now they're like almost 70. So it's been going on all this time. And, and, and it's very, it's captivating. Um, I haven't seen all of the episodes. I've seen a few of them. They used to play them on, you know, when a new one would come out on PBS when I was in the US, they would like play the last few ones and the new one. Um, but I remember they would do sort of, they would focus a lot on one person, but then they juxtapose it with another. Mm -hmm on a particular question and then they'd like veer off to the, anyways. Hmm, interesting. Probably much bigger budget than <laughs> what you're looking at. <laughs> but yeah. I thought that was it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting how they, because those people don't connect to each other necessarily. They right. was just kind of like getting a direct representation of British society across, across the longitudinal, yeah, uh, yeah across time. Yeah, yeah, interesting, yeah. interesting. What did you think of these questions? Um, I, I thought they were fun, but I think they're, 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 it's, it's challenging to give, um, answers relatively quickly answers that, that feel authentic and true and that you're comfortable yeah. revealing. And I think there was a little bit of that going on in your brain at the time. It's like, okay, sometimes you have a pretty sense and it's like, okay, how do I present this? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and you don't want to be too, I mean, the point of engaging in this isn't to be too filtered. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, to, to, to give some space, yeah, to give some space to being, being authentic and still feel comfortable with, you know, um, also a little bit of insecurity when you don't know who's the audience, right? Yeah. Like, is it going to be mostly AI research is going to be people I know, people I don't know, people internal, external, yeah. that that gave it a little bit of um, <laughs> edge of my seat feeling yeah. in some cases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope it wasn't too much. I was trying to have a mix of some questions that might feel a little bit that way, um, others that might be less that. Um, I debated between just sharing the questions ahead of time so that people can give it thought and they don't, they feel sort of less on edge. Um, I also worried a little bit that if you overthink it, then sometimes it takes the authenticity away. So I'm not yeah. sure if I've quite hit the right balance. Um, but yeah. I think it works. I think it works. Um, I think for just for me as a person, I tend to, to keep kind of a, a relative separation between uh -huh. just one second. Yeah. Um, to, to keep relative separation between sort of the work life and the personal life. And so when they, and there's places where they've come together and I've kind of delineated those spaces. And, mm. and then this, this was certainly bringing me a lot more into the personal side than I usually am. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a little bit more guarded at work. I still, you know, on my Facebook profile have kind of, I use the different groups and different information goes to different groups and <laughs> kind of control that a bit. And so, yeah, there was also a bit that feeling, but I, I did not, uh, I certainly didn't feel uncomfortable about it. It was just <laughs> it me a little bit compared yeah, to you, yeah. which I think is the point of this exercise, yeah. of this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for taking the time to do this, Joel. 
happy to do it. Uh, it's great, to, always great to chat with you. Good luck with your other other ones. I'm looking forward to seeing the results. Whatever you're ready to share. <laughs> yeah, sounds great. Sounds great. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Have All a right. Good day. You Bye. too. Bye.